Welcome everybody, this is Design and Technology. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on manipulating shapes in Tinkercad. The very first thing that you need to know is you need to use a mouse. You have to have a mouse so that you can move around and understand what you are going to be working with. Without a mouse it's a lot harder. If you're using a touchpad, it just makes it one layer more complicated and so get a mouse and let's get started. First off, let's begin with a simple block. Now there's a lot of symbols and there's lots to see here and it does look intimidating, but let's look at specifically what do we see on the block itself. This is where we're going to start. The corners are white squares. These are going to change the dimensions of the X and Y and the Z is this one over here. This is going to be Z. What you also need to know is the black squares allow you to adjust only one side at a time, while the white ones on the bottom will move two dimensions. You can also click and change the size if you'd like. Now, talking about the mouse, left button selects the object, wheel mouse, zoom in and zoom out, and if you click, you can, if you click on the right button, I'm using a Mac, so for me, right button will allow me to rotate the workplace, work plane, sorry, and then on top of that, let's go back to the shape, there are three ways that we can rotate it on the X on that plane and that way lots of movement All right, let's go back once you have that there's a last bit where you can elevate the object into the air you can zoom in it's really important to be able to be comfortable with moving the object around. There's also this side menu that can also help you with adjusting the dimensions and the height. So you've got length, width, and height. And there's also radius. This is pretty interesting as well. If you want to round it on the corners, there you go. Gives it a softer look. Remember, anything that is touching the work plane can be printed. If it's elevated, there's nothing underneath, and three-dimensional objects cannot be easily printed. And what else can I have? Now, if you're moving around an object, you'll notice that there's a little number over here that tells you if you're raising it above and below. It'll tell you the height off the base. And remember, all the measurements are in millimeters. All measurements are in millimeters. Get familiar with moving around the objects, rotating them in whichever direction. Oh, and then you, you also have to know that once you're rotating in the inner circle, you're going every 22 and a half degrees, while on the outside, if you're going to be moving it, it's going to be every one degree. So you can have it precise, or you can have it snap into specific positions. Now, the whole option. I'm going to take a cylinder, make it invisible, put it inside, raise it up so it sticks out. I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to hit the alignment, make sure that it is aligned. cylinder on the inside and make sure that it's going all the way down and then we're going to merge it that's really important if you merge it there's a hole in the center you can just still change the height okay that hole is always there and there you have it let's recap quickly all right so the corners 
allow you to adjust the dimensions. The one at the top is the height. The trying the arrow is elevation. These are the rotations in the three directions. Now I might be getting confused with my X, Y, and Z, but honestly, as long as you can manipulate it the way you want it to, it, it really doesn't matter what you call the planes. Just be able to. It's all about actualizing your ideas. And I'm hoping that anybody who's watching this video will walk away from this and understand at least a little bit of it and not be so worried about Tinkercad and its complexity. And uh, it's all about building. Thanks for watching Design and Technology. Make sure to subscribe and don't forget, leave messages down below and I'll try to answer them as the best as possible. Thanks and take care.